Different countries around the world use different currencies, in other words, different types of money. So, for example, if you were in the United States of America and you were buying things, you would be using dollars, right? Here's a picture of a dollar. This is the money you would be using if you were in the United States of America. Now, how much each of the currencies, dollars, rands, pounds, whatever, are worth, changes all the time, and they change relative to each other. So that's why we have what we call an exchange rate. That tells you how much each type of money is worth in comparison to another. So, for example, we could say the exchange rate between the rand and the US dollar is 11 rand 50 is equal to one dollar. What that means is if you are going to go to America and you want to get some dollars so you have money there, for each dollar you want to buy, you have to pay 11 rand 50. So if you wanted to buy two dollars, then you'd have to hand over two lots of 11 rand 50. If you want to buy three dollars, you'd have to hand over three lots of 11 rand 50. If you want to buy a hundred dollars, you'd have to hand over a hundred lots of 11 rand 50. So you can see that these old exchange rates work very similarly to everything we've been doing with ratio and rates up until now. So I'm putting the money aside. Let's go ahead and do some calculations. So we can write this like if we know the 11 Rand 50 is equal to $1, we can write it in the way we always have been. 11 Rand 50 to $1. Now we can answer our questions in the same way we always have. If you want $20, well, what have you done? You have said you want 20 lots of $1, so you've got to hand over 20 lots of 11 Rand 50. So 20 lots of 11 rand 50. Let's just have a look at how to do this. 11 rand 50 multiplied by 20 is going to be the same as 115,0 multiplied by 2, which is going to be the same as 230. So that's going to be 230 rand. So I have to hand over 230 rand in order to get 20 dollars. Now, the next question is actually going to be quite a bit more complicated to figure out. Because what they're asking me there is how many dollars will I get for 500 Rand? So let's just start this calculation. Let's see what we've got here. We know that for each $1, it's going to take 11 Rand 50. But now we want to get to 500. Now I don't know about you, but I can't figure out immediately how to get from 1150 to 500. What have I multiplied by? I don't know. And so what I'm going to do is just take it one step, put one step in the middle, which will make it a whole lot easier. And what I can do is I can say, look, what will be easy is if I can figure out what one rand is worth. If I can figure out what one rand is worth, then it'll be very easy to get 500 rand because I'll just multiply by 500. So how do I get what one rand is worth? Well, what did I do from 11 rand 50 to get to one rand? I had to divide by 11 rand 50. So what must I do on this side? I need to divide by 11 50. Now, I'm not going to bother to calculate the answer just yet, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is just, I take the 1 and I divide it by 11 rand 50. Then, to get to the 500, I had to multiply here by 500, so I must also multiply on this side by 500. And so I get here 500 over 11,50. And that's the answer, right? Except obviously we don't like to see answers written like that. So at this point, I'm just going to go to my calculator and I'm going to calculate 500 divided by 11.5 and I will get the answer there that from my calculator is 
43 comma 48 that idea of if it gets complicated to get straight to the answer of going through the one is an important one and you'll use it often when you're dealing with rates or ratios so let's have a look at another example if we've got 24 apples costing 36 rand right and I want to give 10 of them to my sister and I need to know how much to charge her I don't want to make a profit I just want her to pay the same amount that they're worth um, I've got to go from 24 apples I've got to figure out 10 right and I can't easily see what am I divided by whatever from to get from 24 to 10 so I'm going to use that idea if it's difficult to see what I've divided by I'm going to use the idea of going to 1 first because it's always easy to see that what I've done to get from 24 to 1 is I've just divided by 24 and so here I'm just going to divide by 24 and so what I'll get is 36 over 24 and then what do I do to get up to the 10 well I've multiplied here by 10 so I'll multiply here by 10 and what I'll get is 36 times 10 over 24 and there's my answer except obviously I want to write that a bit better I want to actually get to the end of the calculation 36 times 10 is 360 360 over 24 well I can see I can divide both of these by 12 so I'll get 2 here and I'll get 30 here because 3 12s are 36 and then 2 into 30 is 15 so this answer here is 15 and I'm done a rate that you will be working with a lot is speed. Let's look at an example. If we're going with a car that travels at 60 at a speed of 60 kilometers per hour, we can write this in our typical rate way of saying, well, each 60 kilometers takes one hour. And then if we asked a question, how long will it take to travel five hours? We can work it out in the same way we've always worked out rates. And that's saying, well, we've now multiplied this side by 5 and so it'll obviously work out 5 times the distance and so we will get that it'll travel 300 kilometers in the 5 hours. Similarly we could say okay how long is it going to take for it to do 240 kilometers if it's going at 60 kilometers per hour? Well to get from 60 to 240 we multiplied by 4 so we'd have to multiply here by 4 and we would get the answer of 4 hours. So in problems involving distance, speed and time we can just carry on using our normal rate idea. But because we use it so often, actually, people have come up with a cute little way of helping us um, to remember how to do it very easily. Let me show you that other way of doing it. This triangle here is the key to it. What this triangle here gives us with a DST like that gives us a way of quickly figuring out how these things are all related. So what we can read from this triangle is that distance is equal to speed times time, speed times time. We can also read off that speed is equal to distance over time, so distance over time, and that time is equal to distance over speed, distance over speed. So this little triangle is just a cute way of helping us remember um, how all these things are related when you're talking about constant speed. So let's see how we can use it. For example, to do the same stuff we've just been doing, if we've got the car traveling at 60 kilometers per hour and they ask us how far it will travel in five hours, how far means we're looking for distance. And if we go here, if we're looking for distance, it's speed times time. So it's speed times time. So it's going to be 60 kilometers per hour times by five hours. And that's going to give us 300 kilometers and if we look at the next one how long will it take us well we're looking then for time if we're looking for how long and 
from our little triangle to help us remember we can say time is distance over speed so time is distance over speed so the distance was 240 kilometers the speed was 60 kilometers per hour and 240 divided by 60 that'll give us four hours okay so this little triangle here makes it really easy to work out um, any problems with distance, speed, and time. The only slight thing you need to be careful of is watching what units everything is in. You need to make sure that your units are the same throughout. So just have a look here in this problem. We've got a car traveling at 90 kilometers per hour, but then they go and ask us, how far is it going to travel in 20 minutes? In other words, we've got minutes here and hours in the speed. Not a big issue. All we have to do is make it all the same. And so what we've got to do is turn 20 minutes into an amount in hours. So we know that time is 20 minutes. How much of an hour is 20 minutes? Well, you know that it is 20 minutes out of the full 60 minutes that are in an hour. In other words, 20 over 60, right? If we do the um, cancelling, cancelling for fractions, divide top and bottom by 10, and then you get 2 sixths, divide top and bottom by 2, you're going to get 1 third of an hour. So 20 minutes is 1 third of an hour. Now you've got no problem because everything is in the same units. And so we just go to our triangle. We're being asked to uh, how far it'll travel. In other words, we're looking for distance. So we've got distance is equal to speed times time. So it's speed times time. And our speed is 90 kilometers per hour. Our time is one third of an hour. And so 90 times a third is going to give us 30 kilometers. Okay, I want you to try the next one. Pause the video and try it now. So same story here. You need to put the 45 minutes into hours. So it's 45 over 60 hours. And if you cancel that down, dividing top and bottom by 15, it's three quarters of an hour, right? And you should know that 45 minutes is three quarters of an hour. Okay, and again, this one, we're looking for how far. So again, it's just distance. And so our distance is speed times time. So it's going to be 100 kilometers per hour times three quarters of an hour. And when you work that out, you will get 75 kilometers.